it just reminds you a lot about human conditions of 21st century living in a big city and seeing them after 20 years of being a couple again on screen is such a gift and blessing. Xiaomi Jia, A Little Mood for Love is a 40-episode drama that's been aired on satellite television and Youku. This drama is directed by Wang Jun, led by Huang Lei, Zhou Xun, Qing Hai Lu, Tu Song Yan, Xiang Han Zhi Zhou Yi Ran, Liu Li Li, Tang Yi Xing. Not looking at anything, I can't remember more names. A lot of very well-known people. If you look at the title, Xiao Something, it may remind you of a drama that came out in 2019 called Xiao Huan Xi, or a drama that came out in 2016 called Xiao Bie Li. And during you're not wrong in that because those two dramas were also directed by the same director, by the same production company, Ning Meng, plus some other companies, even the leading actors overlap. And then one of the main people who is pushing that project forward is Huang Lei, who was one of the many scriptwriters of Xiao Huan Xi, A Little Reunion, and also this drama, Xiao Mi Jia, A Little Mood for Love. This production started shooting in March this year, finished shooting in July, December it comes out. So it's a rather fast, within one year time frame production everything considered for Chinese drama. At this point making this video, I've watched the first 10 episodes, so this would be a first impression based on that. And I'll give it a 2.5. Okay, go my already at this point. I don't see it collapsing too much, really, for any reason, due to its previous series success and quality and just looking at the cast and who are the people who made this drama, it's unlikely it's gonna crumble. And if it's a particular type of drama that you really dig, you will be very, very happy about that. There isn't that much to talk about in terms of the plot. You'll see it's ensemble drama that features multiple families, it will feature multiple generations of characters, middle-aged parents, young kids, college age. In this drama, you have the older generation, the grandfather, grandmother generation, a domestic contemporary family life drama. So there's no end goal for this type of storytelling. And it just reminds you a lot about human conditions of 21st century living in a big city. Now let's talk about good and bad. I will talk about the bad first, which is there really isn't anything significantly bad about this drama. If somehow I have to force myself to say what may not be so ideal about this drama is it's not gonna have super exciting, adrenaline kicking type of plot. With audience's expectation of this type of drama and all the cast members that are so well established actors and actresses, it's just not gonna surprise people because they're already very high ceiling actors. It's pretty much impossible for them to do anything that will make you go. For me, for example, give it that three gold mine, super, super high, top, top, top rating. Just because my expectation of that is already high and they meet it, but it's unreasonable to require somebody who performs to say the full mark is 100 and they always do 99. And then you somehow hope they can do 102, but then the system actually doesn't have 102. <laughs> so, you know, I don't think it's anything that's negative about this drama, but it's pretty much like the drama, because of how good it is, it just wouldn't be able to break through itself, if that makes sense. And obviously, it's still one quarter of the drama at this point, so if unfortunately it starts to slip off later, which can happen to any drama, then but those are the things in the future. So what's good about this drama? <laughs> First thing, as I've said, if you liked Xiao Bie Li, Xiao Huan Xi, that type of dramas, you're gonna like this one. Very well written, very well played, everything just, just flows. It's a joy to watch a drama when you know the team behind it, every department knows the shit. They know exactly what to do, what not to do, how to do it. It's like going to a restaurant that you've been to a million times and you know the chef is really good and you know exactly what you're gonna get and you get what you want. And second thing, obviously, is the casting and then all their performances. This type of drama, Wang Jun directing, is just his strong suit. What can you say? This director is known to be one of the best directors directing this type of drama. Pretty much I think the entire crew, including the actors, the script writers, producers and the company, they've done this a couple of times now, so they're so at ease. In terms of casting, although the drama doesn't emphasize that in any way in the drama itself, it's very easy to see how carefully they picked the actors. For example, Zhou Xun and Tang Yixing are playing 
sisters, Zhou Xun and the elder sister, Tang Yixin, the younger. So they really do look alike, particularly their face shape and where sort of their you know, eyes and nose and everything is positioned, look like they can come from the same set of DNA. Even the mother character played by Liu Lili, who is the mother of Zhou Xun, just the way she smiles and look at people, you can see that in Zhou Xun as well. Or when they decided to pick Xiang Hanzhi as the daughter of Huang Lei. There's also that level of similarity and vibe and you really do believe they are a family. It does add a, quite a lot of believability to the story. Then to the actors themselves, each and every one of them really fit the role well. Everybody is talking about that on China's internet when they're watching the drama, Zhou Xun and Huang Lei. Collaborating again after how many years? Probably two decades, something like that. Back in the days of Rose Dad's best time, they did Ren Jian Xue Tian, they did Ju Zi Hong Le. In both dramas, didn't really end up happily together. I think particularly the very unique sense of tragedy and romanticism in Ju Zi Hong Le left a lot of people with a very strong impression for them as a screen couple, even though it's tw two decades old. If you were old enough at the time when that drama aired that you can actually understand what the drama is talking about, then you probably have a strong impression even till today. At least it's my case. There was a time when Ju Zi Hong Le was airing that I was just so taken by their particular romantic relationship and coupling and their acting. So there's a level of <laughs> nostalgia really for older audiences these days when they see Huang Lei and Zhou Xun playing a couple again, this time as middle-aged contemporary people who are in a way very close to us, to our way of life, to pretty much the average city living Chinese person's life. I definitely have a filter and seeing them after 20 years of being a couple again on screen is such a gift and blessing. But if taking that away, they're also very good actors and actresses and they play this middle-aged nurse at a hospital and then this guy who is middle-aged and divorced, both of them divorced from their previous marriage, each have a child forming a middle-aged couple relationship that's kind of lingering on the edge of whether we should get married or not. There's just so much truth in the way they talk, act, from the language to the body language to expression. It comes from their years of friendship knowing each other. Also comes from both of them being really good actors and they can deliver just like those pinpoint accurate realistic vibration <laughs> acting. This couple definitely holds this drama up but everyone else is also super good like Qing Hai Lu. <laughs> Don't need to worry about her acting, she is also top class. Even the younger ones, Zhou Yiran, Xiang Hanzhi, children's uh, generation, so far very happy with their acting, also very very accurate for their characters. So casting choice wise, performance wise, one of the best dramas of this year. Probably if you have to list the top three, it will take one position. Not sure which one, but it will take one position in terms of ensemble casts, overall level of acting. Then the last thing, obviously most importantly, is the story itself and how it gets executed. First, the story is very grounded in reality. Because we have so many contemporary dramas that are with the pretense of being talking about something but actually is just regurgitated, not really going through your heart, repeating trope, stupid romantic dramas, that this type of super realistic drama comes along like a blizzard, like a tornado that just takes away all those garbages and immediately you see the competition and comparison and you say, yeah, that's a better script 10 times over. Little Mood for Love is the 10 times over good drama so grounded in reality and then being performed out by actors who just knows exactly what this type of script requires. Because Huang Lei is one of the main script writers of this drama and he's been doing similar roles for years now. So in a way, as an actor, I think he got lazy. Look at him and Zhou Xun. They used to be the same generation couple. She can play probably somebody who is like late 30s really with her appearance and how well she managed herself. Whereas Huang Lei, <laughs> he can only play middle-aged father now because he looks like that. There's no other way like if he plays a um, secret agent or a period drama fighter, you're not gonna believe it. Doesn't look like one anymore. He, he has given up on that. So in a way he has fallen into his comfort zone and totally just stayed there. But in another way because he's so good with his comfort zone and he can do it so well that really there's no replacement for him in that sense. Therefore it still works very well for the story. And I feel 
the style of the script of this drama has that strong element of we do have things written down but once we start filming it actors take it and just make it their own as if they're improvising there's so much detail in their acting that's so real apart from you know it's a drama and it's fictional everything else is telling you it's almost completely real and often you in dramas you see sections of it or a moment of it like that and you already say wow this is so well done whereas this drama is pretty much entirely is like that whatever scene whatever actors are in it they're aiming at making it look so real that you feel like it's almost live documentary how the line gets spoken between actors how they just get so relaxed that they make a lot of mistakes as um, normal people would do when you're talking to your friends you're not thinking too much about your grammatical <laughs> mistakes or not and a lot of not having the words coming out perfectly rehearsed it's a joy to watch that amongst a lot of other dramas that are all definitely super well staged and rehearsed that are ongoing now such as um, Who is the Murderer? Luo Yang Dream Garden that I've started watching too uh, and what else? <laughs> I'm just trying to remember there are too many anyway there are too many dramas in comparison this drama jumps out as the drama that looks least rehearsed and you know it's staged but it doesn't appear to be staged so every day I'll just switch it on and watch the two episodes it updates and I know it's not gonna give me a huge unusual dramatic satisfaction at the end of it but I'd be enjoying the process of running through their stories and I think the attraction of this type of drama is really in the process in the moment to moment thing how much it reminds you of things you've seen in your life and how well that's captured and they're not really necessarily heading towards a big payoff or of any kind and you're kind of not really looking forward to that anyway in this type of drama still you have fun with it and at the end of it just adding a little bit which is ah oh, Zhou Xun is a goddess she's one of a kind of the entirety of Chinese film and television so unique that she belongs to her own category and it proves that again and again magical actress oh, I'm happy to be alive at the same time that she is on this planet it would be very sad if you're born at different times either like 100 years apart or something you're either too late or you know too early to enjoy her performance pretty much ever since her first drama or film was done I was already on planet earth so I could have enjoyed her years of change and brilliant works as I grow older, as she grows older and she's like the motto <laughs> that I would want to be able to uh, live up to even when she got too close to 50 years old now she still has the spark of such youthful energy in her anyway, <clears throat> she has been my goddess since I was very young and it hasn't changed and it has been proven again 2021 that she really is one of a kind actress that would conclude my first impression on the drama A Little Mood for Love you know if this is the type of drama that you dig and if it is worth watching definitely 100% thank you for watching Avenue X I'll see you in my next video meanwhile live long and happy drama watching